Have you ever wondered why gear from the 1940s still looks battle-ready today? You see these old canvas packs, wool coats, and field tarps from World War II, and many of them are still in near-perfect condition. Meanwhile, the modern stuff we buy? The nylon tears, the coatings peel off, and that waterproof label seems to wash away after just one tough season. Well, long before Gore-Tex or those polymer sprays ever existed, soldiers in the trenches relied on something far simpler and, in many ways, a lot smarter. It was a handmade formula that turned ordinary cloth into a shield against rain, snow, and mud. And the best part? No factories, no complex chemicals, just tallow, paraffin, and pine resin. This was the soldier's great waterproofing secret. It was a recipe born not in sterile laboratories, but in frozen camps and muddy outposts. During World War II, when supply lines were cut and gear couldn't be replaced, soldiers had no choice but to improvise. Their tarps ripped, their coats soaked through, and their blankets would literally turn into sheets of ice overnight. So, they created their own waterproofing compound. They'd melt down animal fat from their rations, scavenge candle wax, and scrape resin straight from the trees. What they made wasn't just a simple coating. It was chemistry, born from pure survival. It was a greasy, waxy mixture that didn't just sit on top of the fabric. It fused with the fibers, sealing them tight against water, wind, and whatever else the front lines could throw at them. Imagine the conditions that drove this innovation. On the Eastern Front, temperatures would plummet far below freezing. In the Aleutian Islands, storms could rage for days on end. Soldiers had zero chance to dry their gear between patrols. Oil cloth would crack, synthetic coatings would peel, and once a coat got soaked, it froze solid by morning. Something had to change. Field engineers and craftsmen began experimenting. They mixed tallow from their cooking, paraffin scavenged from candles, and pine resin harvested from nearby trees. The mixture they finally discovered became legendary for one simple reason. It actually worked. When they brushed it hot onto fabric, it formed this flexible film that water just couldn't get through. Rain would roll right off like it was hitting glass. Snow would melt and just slide away. And yet, the material stayed breathable enough to resist rot and mildew. Now, unlike the modern waterproofing sprays we use today, which eventually flake off or delaminate, this handmade mix bonded directly with the fibers. Once it cured, it didn't just sit on the fabric. It became part of it. Soldiers could treat a single blanket once and use it for entire campaigns. Both Allied and Axis troops documented how these grease-wax blankets replaced tarps, kept their bedrolls dry, and turned muddy foxholes into livable shelters. The ingredients might have varied a bit by region, but the principle always stayed the same. Tallow gave the fabric softness and flexibility. Paraffin added structure and serious waterproofing. And the pine resin locked it all in place. Mixing the formula out in the field wasn't complicated, but it did require patience. Soldiers would melt down tallow and paraffin in roughly equal parts over a low fire. Then they'd add small chunks of pine resin until the blend thickened up and gave off a faint woody aroma. This liquid wax was then brushed or rubbed onto the cloth while it was still hot using whatever tools they had on hand, sticks, rags, even the backs of their mess tins. After it cooled, the cloth was gently reheated near a campfire. This crucial step allowed the mixture to soak deep into the fibers. What resulted was a darker, slightly stiffer fabric that shrugged off water like it was nothing. To test it, they just flick a few drops of water on the surface. If it beaded up and rolled away, the job was done perfectly. The uses were endless. A single coat could turn a wool blanket into a makeshift poncho. 
A second coat could create a tarp that survived months of relentless rain. Soldiers lined their trenches with it, wrapped their sleeping rolls in it, and even used it to seal the walls of their foxholes. And here's the brilliant part. When the coating started to wear thin, they just had to reheat the fabric. The wax would remelt and reseal itself. That's the genius of this formula. It was endlessly renewable. No resupply shipments needed. No dependency on factories hundreds of miles away. All it took was a little heat and a little patience. The science behind it is fascinating. It all lies in how these natural waxes and oils interact with fabric. Synthetic coatings, like the stuff on modern waterproof jackets, just form a surface layer that can easily crack or peel. But tallow, paraffin, and resin actually seep in between the individual fibers, filling the gaps while still allowing the material to breathe. The result is a surface that's both watertight and remains flexible even in freezing temperatures. Even small scuffs and scratches would heal themselves when warmed, as the wax would simply reflow and fill in the damage. It was self-repairing gear, decades before smart materials were even a concept. And there were hidden benefits, too. The smell alone had a practical use. The blend's mild, resinous scent helped repel insects and mold. The matte finish reduced glare, which was vital in combat zones where a simple reflection could give away a position. And the coating even provided a bit of light insulation, keeping the fabric warmer to the touch. Everything about it made perfect sense for soldiers in the field. No fancy equipment, no fragile synthetics, just nature's own chemistry, refined through sheer necessity. Today, collectors and bushcraft survivalists are bringing this formula back to life. By melting paraffin and tallow in equal measure, about 40% each, and adding 20% pine resin, they're getting results that can outperform even modern gear. The same mixture can waterproof tarps, canvas packs, and outdoor coats without a single drop of plastic. It's a sustainable method. It's renewable, biodegradable, and endlessly repairable. Some people are even using it for tents, tool rolls, and firewood carriers. When you heat the fabric slightly after applying it, the fibers soak in the mixture for good. And just like the soldiers did 80 years ago, you can refresh it anytime just by warming it near a campfire. For anyone looking to recreate this technique today, safety and balance are what matter most. Too much wax can make the fabric brittle, too much grease, and it'll stay tacky and attract dust. The ideal formula really remains the same. 40% paraffin, 40% tallow, and 20% pine resin. If you want to reduce the odor, you can use beeswax or soy wax to replace the tallow. But the resin is key. It's what locks everything together. The process can be done on a stove, with a double boiler, or even in a pot over a campfire. You just brush the melted mixture on evenly, let it soak in, and then reheat it gently. The fabric will darken, toughen up, and completely transform into a waterproof shell. This wasn't just some clever field trick. It was a mindset. When soldiers had nothing left to rely on, they engineered their own solutions. They transformed waste materials into survival tools using chemistry that was born from necessity. It's a powerful reminder that innovation doesn't always come from big industry. Sometimes it comes from a muddy trench, a flickering campfire, and a soldier who simply refuses to freeze. The same ingenuity that waterproofed blankets back in 1943 can help us today, whether it's preserving old canvas or crafting gear that S has built to last for decades. Every time someone restores a World War II pack or field coat using this ancient mixture, they're reviving more than just a technique. They're reviving a piece of human resilience. The old ways aren't gone. They're just waiting to be rediscovered. Because sometimes, the best solutions aren't new at all. They're just forgotten. Thanks for watching.
If you found this story as fascinating as I do, please hit that like button and subscribe for more dives into history's forgotten secrets. See you next time.